This is a tutorial about the builder pattern in Go. It is particularly useful when you have to create complex structs with many optional fields. Personally, I like it because it will result in a very intuitive API. In this easy example I'm going to use the pattern to build a struct that represents a personal computer. So I'm creating a PC package. My PC can have a motherboard, memory and a CPU. For the sake of simplicity, all fields are of type string. After defining the struct that I want to build I'm creating the builder struct. The builder has a field of the type that the builder should build. So, in this example, the PC builder struct has a field PC of type personal computer. You will see how the builder works in a second. Note that the PC builder struct is private, because one shouldn't mess with it outside of the package. That is why I'm defining a public function that creates a new PC builder struct. It will initialize the PC struct of the builder and returns a reference to a PC builder. Next, I'm defining the methods that are used to set the individual properties of my PC. I'm starting with the method for the motherboard. Note that the method has a pointer receiver because it will change the PC property of the builder. Also note that each of these methods returns a reference to the builder. This way, when using the builder, you can chain the methods for the individual fields. Consider liking or subscribing if you want to support the channel. The next method is the build method. It is characteristic for the pattern, although it often has different names. In general, it coordinates the assembly of the struct to be built and returns it. Here, it also may return an error. In this easy example, there isn't actually much to do inside the build method. Therefore, I'm just validating that the final PC has a motherboard, memory, and a CPU. If one component is missing, there will be an error and the PC will not start. In this case, the build method will return null for the PC. If the PC has all necessary components, the build method will return a pointer to the final PC struct. Now, I'm going to build a computer inside the main method using the PC builder of the PC package. As you can see, the API of the PC package is actually very intuitive because I can just add the different components by chaining the respective methods. Note that the order of the methods does not matter. Only the build method has to be called last, since it will return the final PC. If there is an error, the program will exit with a fatal log. If there is no error, I'm going to print the PC struct using a special format specifier that prints the individual fields of the struct. I didn't add any memory to the PC in order to demonstrate the error case. After I added the memory, it works and the PC starts. Next, I'm modifying the PC struct because I noticed that a PC actually needs a power source. I just have to add a field to the struct and the respective method to the builder. Also, I'm adding an error in case the power source is missing. As you can see, without the power supply unit, I get the no power error. Adding the power supply to the PC will fix the problem. In the way I wrote the built method, there is actually no optional field in the PC struct because so far, every missing component leads to an error. Therefore I'm adding the option to include a graphics card into the PC. As you can see, the PC will start in both cases, without the extra graphics card or with it. The builder pattern is an alternative to the functional options pattern, which is probably a little bit more persistent in Go.